Hi friends! Okay, so today I thought we'd start something a little new. I know school's not going to be back in session for a little while, so I thought instead of reading picture books every day, I could alternate between picture books and a chapter book that you can all um, join me and listen to. So we'll be reading Box of Shocks by Chris McMahon. He is a Canadian author. I read this book to a few grades a few years ago, and they were big fans, so hopefully you are too. Um, I will put the description of the book in the description of this video. I'm just gonna dive right in. Also, quick note, you might see my cat Ouija roaming around. Technically, I'm sitting in his chair, so don't be surprised if he just roams around. All right. <laughs> Let's get started. Box of Shocks, chapter one. I hear Ouija over there right now. <clears throat> I only lied to mom and dad when I have to, like now. It's a rainy Saturday afternoon in October and I'm down in the basement of our house digging in the dirt floor with a rusty old shovel. The basement is the only place in the house mom won't go. She's afraid of mice, spiders, snakes, that sort of thing. Right now, she's at the top of the stairs. You better not come down here, Mom, I call up to her. I just saw two spiders a minute ago, and a mouse ran right past me. It was being chased by a snake. I didn't actually see the spiders or the mouse, and I've never seen a snake down here. Sure, it's a bit of a lie, but it's the only way I could keep Mom from coming down here and telling me what to do. As for dad, he's not afraid of mice, spiders, or even snakes, but he does have a dust allergy. When he goes into the basement, he ends up coughing and sneezing for about a week, so I'm pretty safe from dad. That's why I like it down here. It's the only place in the house where they can't bug me. I hope you were careful on the stairs, Oliver, mom says. She's worried about me on the basement stairs ever since the time when I was five and Dee Dee, the babysitter, was taking care of me. I did a few somersaults down the stairs and ended up breaking my arm. Sure, it hurt, but it wasn't such a big deal. Mom and Dad were pretty freaked out though. Now they figure every time I walk down the basement stairs, I'm gonna do a repeat performance. Yes, I was careful on the stairs, Mom, I say. I made it all the way down, safe and sound. No broken arms, both my legs are still attached, and my brain is still inside my skull. You don't have to worry. Besides being left alone, there's another reason why I like it down in the basement. I love to dig in dirt, especially this dirt. Our house is so old, the basement floor is just dirt. And I like dirt because dirt has possibilities. You never know what you might dig up. Who knows? Maybe I'll find a stash of money. Maybe a gang robbed a bank, used this house as a hideout and hid millions of dollars under the dirt floor. And maybe they were caught in a shootout before they could dig out the money. You never know. Oliver, mom said again, calling from the top of the stairs. What is it? Your lunch is ready. Lunch? Why would I care about lunch when I'm able to dig up a suitcase full of hundred dollar bills or a trunk full of gold bars. It's okay, mom, I don't want any lunch, I call back. But it's already on the table and it's your favorite. My favorite? You made chocolate covered jelly beans for lunch? No, Oliver, it's macaroni and cheese, your favorite food in the whole wide world. I hate it when she says something is my favorite food in the whole wide world. Macaroni and cheese is not my favorite food in the whole wide world. My favorite food in the whole wide world is actually marshmallow pizza. I'm not expecting mom to serve up marshmallow pizza anytime soon, unless someone discovers that marshmallow pizza is in the same food group as broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and spinach. For some reason, I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Okay, I'll be up in a minute, I say. That is another lie. I won't be up in a minute because I want to dig. Even though I haven't discovered any hidden loot yet, there's a chance I might dig up something else, like some old bones. Not that I'm crazy about digging up an old skeleton, but if I hauled a skull upstairs, my mom would freak out. I would enjoy that. A few minutes later, I hear, Oliver, your lunch is getting cold. 
It's okay, I reply. Macaroni and cheese always tastes better when it's cold. In fact, it tastes best when it's completely frozen. Don't be silly, Oliver. I'm not being silly, Mom. That's when my shovel hit something. Something hard. I jab at it a couple more times. It's not hard like rock. It feels wooden and hollow. Treasure chests are wooden and hollow. But so are coffins. The back door opens and I hear footsteps crossing the kitchen. I recognize those footsteps. It's Dad. Dad doesn't care if I dig in the basement. If I'm lucky, maybe he'll distract mom for a while so I can keep digging. I dig faster. Could this actually be a treasure chest? Then I think skulls are also hollow and sort of wooden. I stop digging. But what if it's not a skull? What if it's a treasure chest of hundred dollar bills or bars of gold or diamonds? I start digging again a little faster until I can see the outline of something with four corners. Upstairs, the microwave pings. Mom must be warming up my macaroni. I dig a bit more, brush the rest of the dirt away with my fingers. Now I can see what looks like a wooden box. It's too small to be a coffin. That's a relief. The top is all scratched and scraped like it's been hit with a shovel. Probably my shovel. I dig around the outside edges with my fingers until I could wiggle them underneath and pull the box up out of the dirt. It's shaped like a shoe box, but a bit bigger. There's no writing on the box, just some squiggly black designs on the side. It feels light. That's not good. Gold bars or even tightly packed bundles of hundred dollar bills would weigh more than this, but there has to be something good inside. Boxes get buried for a reason. Oliver, I warmed up your macaroni. Just give me a minute, I shout. We don't have much time, Ollie, Dad says. We have to leave for your dentist appointment in 20 minutes. The dentist? Last week I had to get my eyes checked. The week before that, I had to see the doctor because Mom was worried about a rash on my elbow. And careful on the stairs, Dad adds. Be careful going up the stairs? Who's ever heard of anyone falling up stairs? Yeah, I'll be careful, Dad, I say, hoping he'll leave me alone for a few more minutes. I can't wait to find out what's inside this treasure box. There are hinges on one side of the box. Very carefully, I pull the edge of the lid. It swings open. I hold my breath, ready to be amazed by what's inside the box. I open the lid and see nothing. No gold bars, no hundred dollar bills. No diamonds, nothing except dead, stale air. What kind of a buried treasure is this? Why in the world would somebody bury an empty box in the basement of our house? There should be a law that if you find a buried box, there's got to be something inside. And whatever's inside should make you stinking rich or at least famous. Or there should be something magical that will change your life. Maybe a ring that makes you bulletproof or a hat that gives you the power to shoot lightning bolts out of your eyes. Not just stale air. The great buried treasure in the basement floor is an empty box. Whoop-de-doo. Ollie, get a move on. We don't want to be late, Dad calls. Yeah, I'm on my way up. Just give me a minute. I hear his footsteps moving across the house to his home office. Who wants some stupid empty box? I should bury it back in the dirt and let some other poor sucker dig it up in a few hundred years. But just as I'm about to drop the, back, the box back into its hole, I think of something, a plan, a spectacularly brilliant top secret plan, a top secret plan so spectacularly brilliant, just thinking about it will make my hair burst into flames. Yes, my plan is that good, but, my spectacular top secret plan is interrupted when mom shouts from the top of the stairs, Oliver, I don't know what you're doing down there, but it's time to come up for your lunch. Do you hear me, Oliver? Yeah, I hear you, mom. I try to fill the hole where the box had been by kicking the dirt with my foot. For my spectacularly brilliant top secret plan to work, I can't leave the box down here. I need to be able to get it easily but it has to be in a safe, top secret place where no one except me can find it. 
The best place would be somewhere in my bedroom. The problem is I have to find a way to smuggle it up there without mom or dad seeing it. It's too big to stuff under my shirt. Mom would notice right away. What can I do? If they see my box, my spectacularly brilliant top secret plan will be ruined. As I stand in the basement with the box in my hands, I get a lucky break. The phone rings and I hear mom crossing the floor to answer it. This is my one and only chance. I tuck the box under my arms, dash up the stairs to the kitchen, tear down the hall, take two stairs, two at a time, to my room and close the door. I have to hide the box fast before mom gets off the phone or dad comes out of his office. But where can I hide it? I have to find a really good place because I'm pretty sure mom snoops around my room when she brings up the laundry or does the vacuuming. I head to my closet, grab all the clothes on hangers and throw them on the bed. I look around inside the closet trying to find a nook or cranny to hide the box. I'm about to give up when I notice one of the wooden wall panels has a corner sticking out. I grab the corner with my fingers and wiggle it. Gradually it loosens until pop, it comes right off. In behind the panel is a small space in the wall between two boards. It looks about the same size as the box. I grab the box and slide it onto the space. Amazing, it's a perfect fit. It's as if the box had been made for the spot or the spot had been made for the box. Either way, the hiding place is perfect. I carefully push the piece of wall paneling back into place. Downstairs, mom calls, Oliver, are you still in the basement? No, mom, I'm in my room. I gather my clothes and start hanging them up. I'll be down in a second. I have to be careful now. I put everything back in my closet. Mum is a neat freak, and she's always after me to keep my room in perfect order. This includes the closet where everything has to be hung up exactly right. If everything's just shoved back into my closet, she will get suspicious. The last thing I want is mum getting suspicious. Oliver, what are you doing up there? Mum calls again. I hang up the last few shirts, close my closet door, and head downstairs. As soon as I step into the kitchen, mom says, just look at your hands, absolutely filthy. What have you been doing? Of course, I'm not gonna tell her what I've been doing. I can't. The box is a perfect secret in a perfect hiding place that mom and dad will never know about. They'll never know about it as long as I'm careful, that is. I'm about to make up an excuse about my dirty hands when mom says, before you eat your lunch, You'd better scrub those grubby hands, young man. I'm happy to wash my hands as I watch the dirt swirl around the bathroom sink and spin down the drain. I can't stop thinking about my secret box, a secret box begging to have secret things hidden inside. As I shovel macaroni and cheese into my mouth, I try to imagine what sort of things I could put in it. I'm not sure exactly. I don't know that it has to be something spectacular. It has to be something amazing. Something, well, something that would shock mom and dad. Oh, that's it. I'll call it my box of shocks. And that's the end of chapter one. Hmm. In the next couple of days, we'll be back to read chapter two. I hope you guys are enjoying the book. I love this book. Um, we'll continue to read it. We'll see how many cameos Ouija makes <laughs> in the videos. Uh, it's so nice to talk to you guys. I hope you're enjoying these story times, and I will see you later. Bye.